Hi everybody, it's uh, John back again with another Model Inbox review. Obviously today we're looking at a MiG-15. Um, this is a Soviet Air Force image of a MiG-15. I think it's a MiG-15 Biz. Um, and I think it's in the air show circuits in the United States of America. Um, the kit we're doing a review on today is the 48 scale monogram MiG-15. Uh, one of the early release 48 scale MiG-15s um, and it's going to be a first for me because I've never built a monogram aircraft model before. I built a few of their ship kits but I've never built an aircraft kit and I'm quite looking forward to this because I've had a look in the box and it doesn't look half bad. It looks quite decent. Anyway, boxing history. That's how we normally go through these in box reviews, the boxing history. The kit originally started off in 1976 with this particular image let's just drop the camera a little bit square it up a bit for you um, and this particular kit is the boxing that I've got a an example of the 76 release uh, from monogram of the original kit when it was originally released in 1976 um, it's quite interesting to see actually that there's a feature with this particular model that, um, I've never seen it before in any other type of kit I've ever built is that yeah you do get a pilot figure but he's not in the aircraft <laughs> he's standing up beside the wing in this image and you do get a standing figure uh, inside the kit which is quite interesting and he's not badly molded either I'll show you I'll show you this guy in a minute um, anyway that's a 76 release um, and that's the model I've got an example of the kit was also released in 1977 for the Far Eastern market through monogram uh, via an agent, well it was actually a modelling company called Bandai and uh, Monogram Bandai released this kit in the Far Eastern market in 1977 and the, re the, the way you can tell the Bandai offering is that it's got the word faggot written in the top right hand corner of the box. The image is exactly the same. Um, I'm not quite sure if you get a tube of glue in the Bandai kit or if you should have had a tube of glue in the original Monogram kit um, because in this image there's a lovely picture of a tube of glue at the bottom here which is quite interesting um, but I haven't got one in my kit which is fair enough and that is, you know, that's what it is but that's a 77 release of the 48 scale monogram kit through Bandai then in 1987 10 years after the Bandai release monogram released an air combat series and one of these models featured the MiG-15 with an adversary kit uh, in the same box of the F-86 Sabre jet um, I do want to talk a little bit about this image because it's quite an interesting image in that during the Korean War, most jet-to-jet -jet combat um, resulted in a successful uh, shoot-down. And usually the jet aircraft that was successful in shooting the other one down usually ended up with what was called a flame-out or a catastrophic engine failure due to the, uh, the other aircraft putting too many bullets into it. And this image clearly shows the MiG-15 has thick black smoke coming out of the aircraft side of its airframe. And this just wouldn't normally have happened in a normal shootdown. Normally what happened is the engine would just give up because it was so full of bullets. It was damaged beyond, uh, beyond capability of producing thrust and it just gave up. And you had what was called a flame out. And the only way an American pilot would know that the MiG-15 was flamed out is by either the pilot ejecting or the aircraft peeling over and going into a dive or maybe just dropping out of the sky into a shallow zoom dive maybe it was very rare for a jet to jet um a jet to de jet confrontation to result in another jet aircraft ending up with black smoke coming out the side of it um, you did sometimes get black smoke coming out of the engine jet pipe, um, but not under this circumstance where it's piling out the side of the airframe here. That's very, very unusual. And it's just something I wanted to point out. But that's, that's the 87 release of the combat adversary set between the MiG-15 and the F-86 Sabre, released from Monogram that year. Then, in 1988... Monogram went into a new type of boxing, where a new modern sort of style of boxing, where the boxes were black instead of the normal white border that they had before. 
Um, and these were quite successful. They were so successful, in fact, that Monogram re-released this kit in 1992. Um, and I'll just go on to the 92 release. The box was exactly the same. You can see 74013 has been repeated on this offering as well in 1992. It's exactly the same kit inside, same decals. Everything's exactly the same. It's obviously just re-released again. Maybe they took it off the market for a couple of years and re-released it in the in the, the new style of boxing. So that's 1992's release of the MiG-15 biz from the North Vietnamese Air Force. And then in 2005, yep, believe it or not, Revell, <laughs> they've released somebody else's kit yet again. And the monogram kits found in a Revell box in 2005's release of the Revell MiG-15 biz faggot. I like the colour scheme that Revell used for their um, for their model release. I thought the colour scheme on this particular kit is really nice. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's nothing stopping you getting aftermarket markings and doing your monogram kit up in these colours or maybe combat colours. You know, they're, they're, the options are vast for the MiG-15 because it was so heavily utilised by lots and lots of different companies. I'm going to leave you an image now of a North Korea, uh, North Korean Air Force MiG-15. I think, again, this is a MiG-15 biz, and this is probably the version of the aircraft that I will be doing, because I'm doing this kit, believe it or not, for a friend of mine, um, along with another monogram 48 scale F-86 Sabre. So, in effect, it's going to be the adversary set that was released in 1987, but it's two separate boxings. It's two individual kits. But it's the same models that were found in that um, adversary set. So anyway, that's the North Vietnamese Air Force colours that you'll get, um, hopefully, that I'll end up rendering with this particular model. We'll just pan the camera down very quickly indeed. Try and make as little noise as possible. So I know the noise on this camera is really annoying. And um, is that better? try and bring the camera a little bit further out for you it still doesn't want to do it does it there we go <laughs> this stand is hopeless i must invest in a new stand anyway this is the kit box it's quite big my hands in front of there you can see it's about three times the size of my hand and although the box is, is a bit tired um you can still see the side images here um, on the side of the box you've got the Russian variant there I think that's the canopy sliding open it's got a sliding canopy on this kit which is quite nice I think that's the Chinese version in the middle and on this side you've got the North Korean Air Force version which is the one I'll be doing of course um, and it's it's quite a nice kit you can see the Chinese variant there on the other side of the box which is quite nice something interesting that I didn't realize Monogram models are actually, um, they're based in Morton Grove in Illinois. Um, I didn't know where they were based actually, but they are based in Morton Grove, Illinois, in the USA. Um, and this kit is copyrighted from its original release date, 1976. There's some information on the side of the box there, giving you stats and a bit of history on the aircraft. Um, there's nothing on the other side at all so basically we'll just open the box i'll just um flip the lid because what i want to do this kit is actually an ebay sales item i bought this model from ebay so you can understand there's no russian markings in this kit at all but i have got the north korean markings which i want um which is quite handy because that's the version i want to do which is great right First of all, the instruction leaflet. This is how we start our inbox of views. The instruction leaflet is quite large. It's not quite A4 width, but it is certainly A4 height. And on the front page, you've got um, some information there, all in English, um, about the aircraft's history and some safety instructions there before you begin assembly. And there's the monogram address again, nicely printed off there in the kit serial number 5403 148 scale from monogram and then you go into the actual build of the kit itself and this is one of the things that i first found about monogram is that their exploded views of their stages of construction are actually really easy to follow 
Um, basically, you start off by building the cockpit bathtub with the instrument panel there and the joystick. Very easy. And then you're building the sliding section for the canopy mount. Again, very easy in section two. And then you move over to section three. And this is where you start realising that the detail on this kit, although the model itself is actually quite simple in constructional form, the parts on the kit are actually quite detailed. This is the front wheel well in section three. And you can see there's quite a lot going on there inside the wheel well. And I'm guessing they're not allowing for a wheels up option with this kit they're not showing you how to portray the wheels up in this model at all which could be a problem for me because my friend wants to have these two models attacking each other hanging from his ceiling which would mean i'd have to build it um, wheels up so we'll have to see how we can get around this um, there must be a way around it i can't see monogram not allowing you to build it wheels up but that's, yeah, that's the way it is at the moment. So section four, you're building the uh, port and starboard side of the fuselage and marrying them around sections three and one. You've also got a little jet pipe at the back there and a splitter plate at the front of the air intake. And then part two, they're showing you that it goes around the front of the splitter plate at the front of the fuselage there and you have to have it in a, lined up with a particular notch. That's because the... Um, there's a, there's a section at the top of the air intake that actually isn't quite centralised. It's slightly offset, I think, to the port side. Um, and I've built the Tamiya 1100 scale MiG-15 recently, and that had that feature as well, that you had to make sure that it was um, attached to the aircraft slightly off-centre. Section 5, you're basically building the undercarriage legs, main, main oleos and undercarriage gear. And then you're also putting the wings together. And then there's a little diagram there that shows the angle of all the doors and everything else. Section six, you basically you have to double that up as well for the other side. And section six, you're putting the slipper tanks on, the flaps, the other inside interior um, main undercarriage door. Um, and then you're putting the wings into place, which is quite easy. And then you've got a right wing assembly there as well. You can see that in section seven. Section eight is the forward gun and undercarriage. No, sorry, it's the gun bay uh, cover. MiG-15 had two different calibers of guns. It had a 37 millimeter cannon, which is part 25A there, and two 20 millimeter, I think there were, or were they 28 millimeter? can't remember it exactly, but there were two different calibers, which resulted in the pilot having real difficulty in aiming his guns because the trajectory and the weight of the 37mm cannon would actually render the, the bullets to fly at a lower trajectory and the smaller calibre would fly in a higher trajectory at higher speed, rendering the bullets to often pass either side of the, the aircraft you're attacking above and below it. In section 9 you're basically putting the tailplane assembly and air intake, uh, sorry, the air brakes assembly together and then section 10 you've got the cockpit canopy um, and that how that all goes on and then part 17 the base, you know, the aerial at the side which is quite easy. And then on the back of the instruction leaflet you've got your three different versions that you can build. You can build the Chinese variant which has got quite complicated camo pattern there quite interesting that would probably look quite nice wouldn't it the people's republic of chinese version nice then you've got the north korean air force aircraft which is just polished aluminium and i've got a magic paint for that which is called tamiya titanium silver and um, when you put the second and third coats on that it comes out a tree perfect for a mig-15 and then you've got the uh the soviet air force one which unfortunately i haven't got the uh transfers the transfers for but I, I want to build a North Korean one up anyway because my friend wants an anniversary set from Korea, which is quite nice. So that's the instructions, quite easy to follow. The decals, North Korean roundels. They don't look, you know, these are quite old decals. They don't look like they're in bad condition, which is quite nice. They look okay. The register on them is excellent. They're not that raised. Backing film is quite clear. Got the Chinese markings there, the flags and stars on the Chinese variant. And then you've got your two numbers for the uh, 
I think that's the Soviet and the um, no I think that's the North Korean 2057 I think is the North Korean number and 34 is a Chinese number which is quite nice those decals are actually quite good I'm quite impressed with those so what we'll do quickly now is I'll just get the parts out of the um, out of the bag and I'll go through the parts in the way that I normally do which is transparencies first let's put those down there we've got three transparency parts here and um, and they're quite nice uh, if I can get these out yeah, there it is they're quite nice um, we've got the Ford canopy here hoping you can see that the Ford canopy it's you know it's nothing to write home about but it's not bad it's quite clear it's nicely framed it will paint up quite nice I'm quite happy with that you've got the sliding section of the canopy which is again it's nicely framed this part will probably need a little bit of polishing up because it's a little bit grubby but it is relatively clear and it's again it's nicely framed and then inside here I'm not sure what this part is yet but I've got a feeling it's something to do with the navigation on the undercarriage maybe maybe I'm wrong or maybe it's a gun sight or something I'm not sure but it looks like it's a navigation light or maybe some sort of port light for the wing or something I'm not sure but that's crystal clear as well so that's quite nice too i um, going to go through a couple of these loose parts before I start going through loads and loads of other bits um, because some of these loose parts are quite nice first of all this shows you a little bit of the detail that you get with the type of monogram kit this is the canopy slide mount you've got a little hinge at the back there it's not really a hinge it's a slide cover and that um, enables you to slide the canopy backwards and forwards and it's quite nicely detailed it's quite nicely cast isn't it I think that will paint up really nice you've got the splitter plate for the forward air intake again that's nicely cast yeah, they didn't do a bad job did they there's the forward ring for the nose quite nice and then you've got this I think this is the gun ammunition cover the ammunition gun pack cover for the MiG-15 is you know and again you've got a little bit of detail inside there that's not injection pin marks that's actually detail which is quite interesting then you've got um, I'll show you the fuselage holes at last because I'll, I'll go through those last because they're interesting you've got a jet pipe that goes at the back and this is really interesting because the engine in the MiG-15, as a lot of people probably know, uh, originally was a, a Rolls-Royce Neen. Um, it was later uh, copied by the Soviets, um, who called it the Klimov VK-1 turbojet. And the thing about it that's quite interesting is this jet pipe is supposed to sit in the back, and you're supposed to see that turbine through the back of the orifice of the rear of the jet pipe. The thing is, that turbine wasn't anywhere near that part of the jet pipe because the jet pipe was basically a very long pipe um, and the engine was probably it wasn't very far behind the pilot the engine itself and the jet pipe was half the length of the aircraft um, I've got a photograph on the in that I got off the internet which actually clearly shows this um, that the engine and the jet pipe are they're both you know half, they're both the same length as each other and the engine sits relatively close to the pilot seat and the jet pipe is half the length of the section of airframe between the engine and the, and the, the back jet pipe hole um, so that part is incorrect uh, monogram you got that wrong sorry but there's nothing you can do about it and I'm not going to mess about with it too much I don't think my friend will actually realize any difference that's this guy here I'm just going to show you this guy this is the uh, the pilot figure who's standing up and he's really quite detailed he'll need a little bit of cleaning up of course but you know he's got his straps and his oxygen mask with the pipe hanging down his earphones the head wear his boots and there's quite a lot of roofing going on but you know on his outfit which is quite nice and you know he's even got a parachute on the back hanging down below his backside and that is correct <laughs> 
so that's really interesting you know i think it'll paint up quite nice you've got some quite nice detail there on the flaps and that's the upper side of the wheel well and that's the lower part of the wheel well you see the detail on it it's not bad is it i think that will paint up quite nice you could probably accentuate that quite nice and you guys who like to use your oils and washes i think you'd have a lot of fun with that You've got your wheel well in the front here, and that's the gun bay for the 37mm cannon. It was a serious gun, wasn't it? Tail planes. A little part there with some detail on it. This is the, the splitter plate that goes underneath the canopy hood in the sliding section of the canopy. And then you've got your, your wheels, and they're quite nicely cast as well. You've got to remember, this is a monogram kit from the 70s. And the parts, I, I was really impressed with the parts. That they, they look quite good. Quite impressed. One bit of detail there as well. And then you've got copyright monogram models incorporated. All rights reserved made in the USA. Which is quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's proof that it's a monogram kit if you need any more. It's quite a lot of recessed, sorry, quite a lot of raised panel lines on this kit which you expect to the model of this era um, but they're not too pronounced and they probably could do with a little tiny bit of sanding down but they're not too pronounced so I don't think they're going to give you much of a problem really to be honest with you um, yeah, that's all the loose parts you got a bit of detail on the wheel wells here for the underside of the wings which is quite nice I quite, I quite like the look of the detail the crispness there on the undercarriage legs there's the instrument panel that will probably paint up quite nice as well. Yeah, quite impressed with that. And then you've got your cockpit bathtub, which is there. There it is. Look, that's really quite detailed, isn't it? Seat's all built in, which is going to be a pain in the neck to actually um, paint, but it won't be impossible. You've got your air, air brakes there, the interior sections of the air brake. In interior detail on the wheel doors for the main landing gear and then you got your cannons your rams for the undercarriage main oleos for the 37 I think they were 37 and 25 millimeter I think they were can't remember exactly and then you got your slipper tanks here and they're quite detailed as well yeah they're not bad so that's the two sprues you know, the parts on this kit quite now. I don't need to show you both the fuselage halves, but I'm going to show you one of them because the thing I found about the monogram kit is, although it's 1970s and it's got raised panel lines, they're at, they don't look out of place and they're quite finely moulded. The casting quality on them is quite good, and I don't think they're going to pose an issue for you. Can you see the raised panel lines on that? a large half and how they sort of look about right even though this should be recessed um, but I think they've done a pretty good job of it and it's not that heavily overdone I don't think you're going to need to do too much with those lines the interior of the air brake there housing that's quite nicely detailed there's no detail inside the cockpit other than the actual bathtub but you know but yeah quite impressed with that I think that's quite nice so that's the uh, the parts. Um, yeah, that's the parts. What I'll do, I'll just drop this all back in. I'm not going to put it back in the bag because I don't want to take your time up. I'm just going to um, put these parts back into here. Um, I think that's it. Get those back into there. And then I can put there's a cockpit for the cockpit section there, that's it. And then I can put this box lid back on and there'll be something there for you to have a look at whilst I read this off. Now with the options and costs, I usually do a section of options and costs, but because the MiG-15 is quite a popular subject for model companies, I've only really covered the 148th and 132nd options because of the larger scales being covered and even so there that you know there aren't that many but there are enough um, so anyway the, the model we're doing the inbox of you on today is the monogram Mikoyan Gurevich MiG-15 the kit serial number is 5403 and its original release date was 1976 and it's released in 148 scale 
There are decals for three versions. The first is a People's Republic of Chinese Air Force. The second is a North Korean Air Force. And the third is a Soviet Air Force. Um, and there are markings for all three of those options. Altogether, there are 50 parts on two silver grey plastic sprues and three parts on one clear plastic sprue, producing 53 parts in total. The kit's dimensions, um, it will build up to about nine and a quarter inches in length. It will have a span of about 10 inches and it should sit about four inches high on its undercarriage. Now, the options and costs, um, as I said, I'm only doing covering 48 scale and 32nd scale. And they are quite interesting and some of them are quite dear for what they are. Um, AMT do the first row of kits are standalone models. They're not reboxed from, you know, they're not reboxing of other, other people's kits. The first kit um, is the AMT offering of the MiG-15 Faggot. This model retails about eight to 10 pound, and by all accounts, it's not that good. Hawk do a MiG-15. Um, again, this kit isn't that good. It was quite an early molding, about 15 to 25 quid. But Hawk also did a MiG-15 chrome plated, and that kit, I haven't got any prices, but it is incredibly collectible and quite rare. So I wouldn't be surprised if it fetched maybe 50 to 100 pound. Monogram's offering, um, I've seen this kit sell for as little as two quid, but it usually goes for about 12, and I've also seen it sell for as much as 25. Um, the Adversary set with the F-86 F Sabre, that kit usually sells between 20 and 25 pound. So that's quite a good, um, a good inexpensive option. Tamiya build a MiG-15 Biz. Uh, 12 to 41 pound that's a very very nice option and the Tamiya option with the clear edition that also comes with a GAZ47B Jeep in 148 scale of the MiG-15 biz that goes for about 30 to 35 pound and that kit is really nice as well because it shows all the interior detail. Trumpeter also do a 48 scale MiG-15 and they do a boxing of a MiG-15 UTI two-seat trainer. Those kits retail for about six to 35 quid, depending on the condition um, and whether there's quite a lot of them on the market at the time. But the trumpeter kit can usually be acquired for about 10 to 12 quid, um, usually. But I have seen it sell for those figures. Uh, Bandai Monogram rebox the Monogram kit, the MiG 15, that goes for about 14 to 20 pound. Kometic reboxed the Hawk kit of the MiG 15 Faggot, that goes for about five to 12 quid. Hasegawa reboxed the MiG-15 Faggot, which is a monogram kit. Again, I've got no pricings on that. Um, Revell also released the monogram kit of the MiG-15 Faggot, which sold for 9 to £25. And Testers did a MiG-15 Faggot, which is the Hawk kit, um, which I've got no prices um, available on that. But again, it they tend to go for about 15 to 20 quid. The thing I do want to say is that the Hasegawa option, I haven't given you um, a pictorial image of the monogram reboxing from Hasegawa because basically I can't get an image of it other than the scale mates and it's just a web picture. So, But basically it is basically just the monogram re-release with the black border, but it had a Hasegawa logo on the top of the box. But it was exactly the same as the second release monogram kit. Now, you can buy MiG-15s also in 132nd scale. And one of the rarest options available is a frog kit from the mid-70s of the MiG-15 Biz. And that kit, believe it or not, you can still get it for as little as 26 to 30 quid. I've seen it online today, available for about 26 99 HPH models, they build a MiG-15 in multimedia and vac form and... Um, styrene and that kit is 120 to 150 pound id models build a vac form kit of the mig 15 no pricing is available on that tac scale dynamics do a multimedia kit of the mig 15 biz and that kit retails for between 180 and 190 pounds and it's on sale at the moment for 189.99 through um, a company that imports it from america um, into England. Trumpeter also did a 32nd scale kit which by all accounts is one of the best 32nd scale kits on the market after the HPH model and that retails between 8 and £35. And Hobbycraft they released a MiG-15 Biz which is a reboxed Trumpeter kit 
and that kit usually sells between 21 and 25 pound conclusions well this will be my first monogram aircraft kit so i have no experience with their quality i.e build fit and detail but it does look quite good um, you also get a pilot figure that's standing up next to the aircraft and that's, i think that's quite novel not too many parts in this kit but the cockpit canopy does slide to reveal quite a detailed cockpit bathtub which looks fairly detailed to me as well i want to build this kit with wheels up though for uh for a friend of mine and it doesn't look like there's an option for gear up with this kit either so i'll have to go through the instructions and test fit a few of the parts and maybe i don't know maybe modify them a little bit so that's going to be quite interesting as well i think i would recommend this kit as you can usually get it hold of it for a as little as only a few pounds occasionally and it's not that hard to find on ebay or amazon if you're prepared to wait maybe a couple of weeks you can usually get a monogram kit um fairly readily on either of those two um sales sites so anyway that's the inbox re re uh, inbox review finish for the monogram mig 15 i hope this video has been of some use um and if you have any queries, questions, anything really at all, just pop them in the comments slip and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible if you need an answer. Um, there are quite a few group builds going on at the moment um, and I've purposely not got involved too much with the group builds because I'm so really busy at work at the moment and I don't think it's fair. But the Frankie Day one doesn't finish until December. So I've made a start on that particular kit, but I have got uh, an inbox of you coming up for that one as well. Um, so Frankie, I hope you I hope you tuned in and listened into all this guy because uh, yeah, it's nice to have you back, and you know it's nice to see you modelling again and starting to enjoy yourself. It's brilliant. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well and your modelling projects are running smooth. And I'll see you again when you tune in for the next one. Thanks for now. Bye bye.